This video is sponsored by The Ridge. So a couple of weeks back, I was browsing one of my favorite groups on Facebook called Sauro Geeks. I wonder why that is my favorite. Well, I digress. I found this post. What is the coolest Sauro hack you've learned? Well, you're about to find out. Hi, I'm Sune. And I'm a food geek. So the best sourdough hacks. I went through all of the hacks, put them in a list and sorted them by likes. I've anonymized the names here, but I will link for the post on Facebook. You'll need to become a group member to see it though. It's a great resource. Here they are from the bottom up. Number 18, doing a 50 to 75% increase on bulk ferment rather than doubling has gotten me much better loaves. All right. This is true, uh, but the truth is more complicated. If you're fermenting warm, you must let your dough increase by 25 to 50%. If you're fermenting at room temperature, 50 to 75%. And if you're fermenting cold, 75 to 100%. Number 17, open bake. Open meaning not in a Dutch oven. It really depends on your oven. If you have one that holds steam inside, you can bake four or even six loaves simultaneously in a home oven. It also makes you feel like a pro baker. Number 16, the discard recipes. Yes, this is so true. Sourdough discard makes everything better. I've made quite a few recipes. I'll leave links for my favorites in the description. Pancakes, chocolate chip cookies, and the absolutely best brownies I've ever tried. Number 15, I'm embarrassed to say that after a year of weighing ingredients separately, I learned you can reset the scales before each ingredient is added, ending the mess of multiple bowls. Lol. <laughs> it's a good tip. I don't know how well known it is. It's called the tear button and it makes it really easy to mix up anything without making a lot of mess. Number 14, bake for five minutes. I actually find seven works better for me and take it out and rescore. This I tested recently. It works, but you should learn how to score. It's not difficult. It just requires practice. Number 13, relax, don't follow the rules and bake in whatever you got. It's like how I was taught to play music. Learn the rules so that you know how to break them elegantly. Number 12, freezer before scoring. I prefer a fridge, but a freezer will do the trick if you're in a hurry. Cold dough is so much easier to score. Number 11, jar scrapings is enough to start your next starter, no discard. It's true, even just a drop at the bottom of your jar can make a new starter, that's all it takes. Feeding like that can even supercharge your starter. It will take up to 24 hours for it to peak though. Did you know that the Ridge makes matching rings to match your wallet? The rings comes in various premium materials, including carbon fiber, tungsten carbide, 24 karat gold, and titanium. The Ridge offers lost and resizing protection. Whether you lose your ring or lose 20 pounds, each purchase comes with the option of two future exchanges for the same ring in the same or different size. Many people are wary of investing in a $200 ring because they may lose it or lose gain weight so that it no longer fits. The Rich's protection program means that they've got your back for life. Save money using my link rich.com slash foodgeek and use my code foodgeek to get 10% off. That's rich.com slash foodgeek. Thank you to The Rich for sponsoring this video. Now we're down to top 10. Number 10, shower cap as a cover, which of course can be used on anything that I used to cover with cling wrap. Yes, shower caps are so much easier than cling film. You can even uh, poof it up so that it won't touch the dough. Great hack. Number nine, you do not need to preheat your oven. Now it's true, I can put a cold dough in a cold Dutch oven in my oven. Turn on the oven to 230 degrees Celsius, 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and leave it for 45 minutes. Then I take off the top and brown the bread. Voila. Number eight, put rice in the bottom of DO under parchment paper or silicone sling. Bottom of loaf won't burn. The bottom of my bread never burns, but I think it's because of how my European oven works. 
There are heating coils both at the bottom and the top, whereas American ovens usually only have heat from the bottom, which I would assume means that it has to be extra hot. But if your bottom is burning, use rice, right? <laughs> Number seven, feed starter, let it rise halfway, put it back in the fridge. Next time you need it, pull it out of the fridge, let it rise in a very warm place. It'll continue to rise and you have a fresh active starter in much more shorter time than it takes to feed it. That's a great tip. I wonder how long it can stay in the fridge and still rise when you take it out. Maybe indefinitely. Number six, adding just a touch of honey or other sugars gives the bacteria something to feed on and speeds up the rising time. Also a good way to bring a dead starter back to life. Sometimes when my starter is sluggish, I add some dried starter. That works wonders. Then you don't end up with a sweet starter that may affect the final bread's taste. Number five, refreshing a loaf by running it under the tap for a second, then popping it into the oven for about 10 minutes at 300, brings it back to that fresh out of the oven wonderfulness. It's totally true, but you can only do it once. After that, it's just dry as heck. Number four, to stir feedings with a chopstick. Who knew? Ha! I do this all the time. Super easy, barely an inconvenience, as they say. This is the way. Number three, wet your hands to handle. You'd think it ruined the dough, but it loves it. Yes, and as you've probably seen in my videos, I've started wetting the table when shaping. Anything to avoid the dough sticking. Hands, scraper, table, it works everywhere. Number two, that I can pour discard on my oiled cast baking sheet, top it with a drizzle of oil, salt, and desired seasonings, then bake and have the most delicious flatbread. I've never actually tried this, but I think I'd mix the seasonings into the discard, but either way, it sounds awesome. And here comes number one, not measuring starter feedings, doing it all based on consistency and feeling. This is definitely not a beginner hack. Once you've baked many loaves, you know how your dough is supposed to feel and measurements aren't that important. Until you're experienced, I vote for measuring and you can always replicate what you did. Let me know what you think of these hacks and please share your best hacks in the comments. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. You can also buy some merch, use the super thanks or use the links for tools and ingredients in the description. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.